Tonight, exclusive former President Gerald Ford and former First Lady Betty Ford in their first interview since Ronald Reagan's death. As thousands of mourners continue to file past his flag-draped coffin at the Reagan Library in California, Gerald and Betty Ford, America's 38th president and his wife, share their memories of America's 40th president, next on Larry King Live. Good evening. Great honor to welcome to Larry King Live tonight the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford. President Ford joins us from his home in Beaver Creek, Colorado. In a little while, we'll be joined by his wife, Betty. Tomorrow night, by the way, former President Bush will be our special guest, along with his wife, Barbara. Mr. President, how did you learn of President Reagan's passing? Well, I was uh, in our house in uh, California at the time. And uh, the word got to me through one of my Secret Service agents. And uh, immediately upon learning that, Betty and I called uh, Nancy Reagan to extend our deepest uh, condolences and extend our prayers. Did uh, you at all see the president at any time in recent years? Oh, yes. Uh, I saw him on occasion. Uh, uh, he and I uh, became very good friends. Uh, let me be very forthright. I think Ronald Reagan was a first-class president, and I treasured my relationship and association with him. Did you see him after he had announced that he had Alzheimer's? I did. I went to his office in uh, Los Angeles one time after he had made that public announcement. He barely recognized me, but we had a chat for 15 or 20 minutes. I tried to uh, bring things up that would refresh his memory, and we had a wonderful, very informal chat, but he was not the Ronald Reagan that I admired and uh, felt as a very good friend. Which, of course, then had to be very sad for you. It was a very sad announcement when we heard, uh, when he made the public announcement uh, that he had Alzheimer's. It shocked both Betty and me because he had been so much on the other side, aggressive, uh, you know, hmm. uh, just a good guy. Before we discuss the relationship between the two of you, what are your thoughts about him on the world stage? The optimism. We remember that great uh, shining city on a hill speech, where at, which was at a convention in which you defeated him for the nomination. Well, I uh, look upon Ronald Reagan's career Number one, he was a firm believer in the strength of the United States and as a nation that was going to be the leader of the free world. Secondly, uh, he firmly believed in the ideology that was uh, the prevailing point of view in the United States. He had firm views that I admired, I respected, and uh, he was a great statesman who we miss very badly. What kind of an opponent was he in that stretch of primaries in 1976? Well, we had a pretty good contest. <laughs> uh, it came out uh, where it, the final votes were cast in uh, Kansas City, and uh, I think I won by a narrow margin, but we became good friends despite, despite that contest. You know, uh, something I learned, uh, Larry, uh, that uh, you have to, in politics, you have to 
give and take and respect the views of others, and I certainly d felt that way toward uh, President Reagan. So you were not angry that even you were the sitting president, he challenged you for the job? I didn't resent it. Uh, I had been in politics long enough, Larry, <laughs> that I uh, <laughs> uh, understood that in the political life, uh, you had to give some and accept some. So uh, I, uh, uh, that was a big, important battle between Governor Reagan and myself, but it turned out that we became very warm friends, and when he ran in 1980, I think it was, I mm. campaigned very hard for him all over the country. In fact, concerning that campaign in 1980, where I, I think it was the first time I ever interviewed you, there were strong rumors that Mr. Reagan was going to pick you, the former president, <laughs> to be his running mate. Was that ever discussed? Well, let me give you the background on that story. Betty and I went to Detroit uh, before the convention. Then Governor Reagan and Nancy wanted to come up and say hello. And they came to the room, and in that room at the hotel in Detroit, he indicated he would like me to be his running mate. I said, uh, Governor, I uh, don't want it. Let, let me think it over in deference to your request. Well, we negotiated back and forth, and it was very obvious that it was better for him to run as the candidate and let me campaign on his behalf, which I did. As we go to break, we'll remember the 1976 convention in Kansas City. We'll be right back with the 38th President of the United States, the Honorable Gerald Ford. Everybody in this great auditorium tonight, we're all tremendously pleased and honored to have Ron Reagan and Nancy Reagan come down. We are all a part of this great Republican family that will give the leadership to the American people to win on November 2nd, I would like, I would be honored on your behalf to ask my good friend, Governor Reagan, to say a few words at this time. Mr. President, Mrs. Ford, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Vice President to be. <laughs> the distinguished guests here and you ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say fellow Republicans here, but to those who are watching from a distance, all those millions of Democrats and independents who I know are looking for a cause around which to rally and which I believe we can give them.
the next CNN Today, football fills the corporate coffers. Companies shell out millions to sponsor Euro 2004 in Portugal. How much will they make back and how secure are those exclusive deals? That's only on CNN Today. Whether or not you know your cam cleat from your clam cleat, Mainsole will have something for you. Mainsole launches June 20th, only on CNN. On the next edition of Design 360, from Berlin, political turmoil and its influence on design. From no man's land to a new city center, how Berlin's past influenced the architects of Potsdamer Platz. And fashion in Russia, communism's impact on Moscow's designers, how fashion has changed since the Soviet era. That's Design 360, Sunday on CNN. In association with Alfa Romeo, Tired of a messy life on the road? On the next CNN Business Traveller from Zurich, getting organised. The skills you need to organise that successful business trip. Those lifestyle managers and whether or not they really lighten your load. And what makes the tech belief tick? We talk to the company's president. That's CNN Business Traveller, Sunday on CNN. On November 4th, if all of you here in our great state of Michigan and all of those wonderful people in 49 other states do as I am certain we will do, this country can start on a new road of, for the next four years with Ronald Reagan and George Bush. little itinerary. The body of President Reagan will be flown from California to Andrews Air Force Base tomorrow. There'll be a funeral procession to the United States Capitol. A state funeral ceremony will be held in the rotunda at 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. And then at 8.30 Eastern tomorrow night, the body will lie in state for the public. The last formal president to have this, by the way, was uh, Lyndon Johnson in 1973. On Thursday, it will lie in state throughout the day and night. And then Friday morning will be the national funeral service at the National Cathedral. Then the body will be flown back to California, a private interment service at the Reagan Library beginning at 9.15. We will have an hour and a half special show on Friday night starting at 9 o'clock until 10.30 Eastern Time as the president, the 40th president of the United States is laid to rest. President Ford, what, if anything, surprised you about President Reagan's presidency? I uh, was pleased that his popularity expanded. I always knew he had a great personality, a great uh, capability to in ingrain himself with the public. Well, he, his presidency showed him to be a very popular and very successful president. Let me say that both Betty and I will be at the cathedral in Washington at the ceremonies, and we are going to pay our tribute to President Reagan, who was a dear friend uh, and a very, very outstanding chief executive. Let's discuss some of your memories. The D-Day speech in Normandy 20 years ago. Remember that speech? I certainly do. Uh, uh, I was not present, but I heard it, saw it. It was, again, a typical uh, case of Reagan oratory dominating the whole circumstance. We're here to mark that day in history when the Allied armies joined in battle to reclaim this continent to liberty. For four long years, much of Europe had been under a terrible shadow. Free nations had fallen, Jews cried out in the camps, millions cried out for liberation. Europe was enslaved and the world prayed for its rescue. Here in Normandy, the rescue began. He did that Here so well. Allies... How about tear down that wall at the Brandenburg Gate? <laughs> that line is uh, unbelievably embedded in the history of our country. Uh, that was an important strong, strong 
comment by the president to Mr. Gorbachev to the Soviet Union that we were going to win, period. You came into office and brought this nation together at a time when Mr. Nixon had just resigned, Vice President Agnew had resigned, there was turmoil, you kept this country together, then President Carter had his presidency, you and President Carter became great friends. What did Ronald Reagan bring to the presidency that vitalized this country so much? Well, the country had gone through some very difficult times. Agnew resigning, Nixon resigning, we had Watergate, we had the war in Vietnam. The country was going through a very difficult period. Ronald Reagan came in. He revised our and uplifted our spirits at a time that was so, so very essential for the future of America. I applaud it. I congratulate President Reagan. He did a heck of a good job. What do you remember about when you went, I know the, the, the friendship with President Carter began when you went to the Sadat funeral. Reagan went to that funeral too. President Reagan went to that funeral. What was that trip like? Well, that was uh, on behalf of the a sad event because I had gotten to know uh, President Sadat. He had, uh, and I had become good friends as we worked negotiated to try and settle the problems of the Middle East. But to go from Washington to the Middle East, uh, that was about a 20-hour flight, as I recall, mm -hmm. with uh, the people that were there in close quarters. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a pressure trip. And was, was, was President Reagan very engaged in it? Was he, what did he think of Sadat? What did you talk about? Well, we talked about the tragedy of the assassination because I always felt, and I still do, that uh, Sadat and Rabin from Israel were a pair that I hope could make real progress in trying to settle and solve the uh, difficult challenges in the Middle East. So w most of the time on the trip, all of us who were involved talked about what we could do to push the peace process forward. We will take a break and when we come back we'll talk about the assassination attempt which uh, President Ford had to face in his life as well. All of that ahead on this special edition of Larry King Live. Tomorrow night, President Bush Betty and his wife, Barbara. Betty Ford will be joining us in a little while. Right back with President Gerald Ford after this. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Today on CNN. With today's vote, we acknowledge an important milestone. The UN Security Council unanimously passes a resolution on Iran. In Baghdad, thousands of Shiites demonstrate in support of Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani's position against the interim Iraqi constitution. And in the U.S., the G8 summit begins. Iraq and the Middle East are high on the agenda. For the latest on these stories and more, watch CNN Today. I condemn the Security Council's resolution against Israel and its unwillingness to condemn Palestinian terrorism, which is the sole cause 
of the violence in the Middle East. Israel has to do what she has to to protect herself. In the meanwhile, to hell with the United Nations. If Israel was interested in protecting their citizens, they would remove themselves from their occupation in Palestine. It's obvious they want something else. And the only other things the Palestinians have are their lives or their land. Views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of CNN. Some calls have been condensed for the sake of clarity and time constraints. Iraq, countdown to handover. I was among the crowds of Shia Muslim pilgrims broadcasting from Kabla when deadly bomb attacks targeted the holy city, turning the annual religious festival of Ashura into appalling scenes of carnage and bloodshed, fueling widespread fears of civil war. I rushed to our rooftop camera position to report on one of the deadliest days of terror in Iraq. As Iraq transitions, stay with CNN. Global Challenges, highlighting technologies, helping people. This week, an architect takes on earthquakes. 21st century technology helps Turks feel safe at home. Walking and working, Vietnamese amputees receive new limbs and a new lease on life. And energy for everyone. Nigerians warm to the idea of free and efficient solar power. These are the Global Challenges, this Sunday only on CNN. We're back with President Gerald Ford coming to us from his home in Beaver Creek, Colorado, and announcing, of course, that he will be attending the uh, funeral at the National Cathedral that will take place at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday morning, of course, televised here on CNN. You had an assassination attempt against you. What, do you, what are your memories about the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan? Well, I had two assassinations and attempts, one by Squeaky Fromm in Sacramento, California, and again in, by Sarah Jane Moore in San Francisco. So I was a bit <laughs> familiar a with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I just couldn't believe why anybody uh, would uh, undertake an assassination attempt at President Reagan. He has such an outgoing, warm personality. It was unbelievable that some crackpot would uh, take a shot at the president, who was a outgoing, friendly, uh, first-class individual. But I guess uh, these people who do attempt assassination are uh, unusual. Squeaky Fromm certainly was off her mind. Sarah Jane Moore the same way. So I guess Hinckley uh, would fall into mm. that same category. When it happened to you after the first time, did you find yourself being super careful? Were you worried at public appearances? Well, you can better ask Betty that question <laughs> later in the program. I think she was more worried than I. I wore a protective vest for a few weeks, uh, but uh, people said to me, well, why don't you stay in the White House and not go out uh, to meet the public? My answer to them was, a president has to be aggressive, has to meet the people, and therefore I did, and uh, uh, good luck, and thank God I had no <laughs> further incidents. Did you talk to President Reagan much during his presidency? Did he keep in contact with former presidents? I had good contact with him. Anytime I wanted to call him at the White House or elsewhere, the, the, I, he was available. And on more than one occasion, if he wanted to contact me, he did directly and we would have a good conversation on whatever the subject was. We developed a very excellent relationship, and uh, it's a sad, sad event that he passed away, even though 
he had the tragic uh, disease of Alzheimer's. Some people are saying sometimes, after all, in living 10 years, there's a kind of a blessing for everybody concerned to, he lived a f full and wonderful life, uh, to go now to a greater reward. You buy any of that? Oh, yes, and I, on behalf of Betty and myself, extend to Nancy our love, our gratitude. We treasure our friendship with her just as we did with Ron and Nancy together. Now, how about him as comforter-in-chief? We'll never forget the speech after the challenger went down. What do you remember about that, Mr. President? I remember it very vividly, Larry, because when I was in the Congress, I was on the committee that made all the money available for our space program. And then, of course, when uh, President Reagan came up with the Star Wars program, oh, I was enthusiastic, and I was saddened by the tragedy in space. And how about his speech? Well, nobody could do it better. He had a fantastic way of communicating. <clears throat> he had a wonderful reputation as the great communicator, which he was. <laughs> so that speech on that occasion was a tearjerker. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. Looking back a second, back to 1976, after you'd won the nomination, you called him up to the podium, did you not? I did. I uh, asked both Nancy and uh, then Governor Reagan to come to the podium, which they did. And there's a great picture of Betty, and myself, and the Reagans on the podium after that particular uh, contest. Do you remember, were you at, I, I know you, I think you were at the 92 convention when President Reagan said goodbye. Do you remember that? I certainly do. Uh, I, um, you may remember, I had a short, very limited stroke uh, in 1990, uh, and uh, but I remember the, I remember the uh, speech by President Reagan, and uh, even though I was hospitalized for about a week, I was enthusiastic about uh, the Republican chances. When we come back, we'll ask President Ford about his own health, how are things going, and then after that, we'll meet Betty Ford. Tomorrow night, the Bushes. You're watching Larry King Live, an hour and a half edition of Larry King Live on Friday night when President Reagan is laid to rest in California at the Reagan Library. We'll be right back. <laughs> believed in you and in what you could accomplish for yourselves and for others. And whatever else history may say about me when I'm gone, I hope it will record that I appealed to your best hopes, not your worst fears, to your confidence rather than your doubts. My dream is that you will travel the road ahead with Liberty's lamp guiding your steps and Opportunity's arm steadying your way. My fondest hope for each one of you, and especially for the young people here, is...
say, some things don't fit, and some things do. CNN's new evening lineup, new shows, new times, a better fit. World News Europe, live world sport, an hour of business international, sharp focus with insight, and an extra live world sport. More world business, more live sport. Ah yes, a lineup that fits the end of your day. They say a picture paints a thousand words. They may be right, but surely words can conjure an image as powerful as any picture. After all, in the beginning was the word. It took humanity hundreds of thousands of years to develop a written language. Let's not waste it. CNN Text. The world at your fingertips. international network can cover the US election as widely with more considered comprehensive coverage than CNN. We look at events that are familiar to Americans, but we look at them at the way non-Americans would, at the way people around the world would. We are the outsiders. We will be stepping back pretty much as we do with any election. CNN brings you the US election campaign in a way that most American journalists can't because of the kind of organization we are. We are unrivaled at being able to take all this information, put the analysis together, and make it comprehensible to the different sectors of our audience. We approach it the way you would, with some skepticism, with some confusion, with a great deal of interest and a lot of enthusiasm, and we hope you share some of our excitement. On the next World News Asia, revving it up in China, I'm Veronica Pedroza. International automakers roll out their finest for China's largest auto show. Who's competing and what's at stake? That's on World News Asia, only on CNN. We who are privileged to be Americans have had a rendezvous with destiny since the moment in 1630 when John Winthrop, standing on the deck of the tiny Arbella, off the coast of Massachusetts, told the little band of pilgrims, we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us, so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword throughout the world. A troubled and afflicted mankind looks to us, pleading for us to keep our rendezvous with destiny that we will uphold the principles of self-reliance, self-discipline, morality, and above all, responsible liberty for every individual. That we will become that shining city on a hill. We're back with President Gerald Ford. A couple more things for President Ford, and then Betty will uh, join us. Was he, was, was President Reagan always, to your knowledge, optimistic? That was a very outstanding characteristic of President Reagan. He always believed that things were going to be better, and he worked hard to make them better, to make the country, the United States, strong militarily, to make it strong enough so that the Soviet Union would collapse. He was an optimist. And he, he, he just lived optimism. How do you explain that relationship with, with Mr. Gorbachev? Well, it was a key uh, time in our relationship because when I was in the White House, when Lyndon Johnson, when others, uh, we were faced with the Soviet Union that wanted to uh, combat us directly. Uh, when President Reagan took over, he d developed that friendship with Gorbachev that was helpful in the termination, the collapse of the Soviet Union. And I applaud President Reagan's role in making that possible. What, President Ford, is the toughest part of being president? 
Well, the toughest spot, Larry, is that you, you have to be available 24 hours a day, every day of the year. And you never know when something is coming up that could meet, that could bring about a challenge to the United States at home and abroad. So um, you just have to expect the worst and always assume the best will take care of itself. So in other words, a president knows if they wake him up at three in the morning, it is not good news. That's exactly right, Larry. And I fortunately uh, didn't have any crises like that, although we had our share of problems. All right, we know about the tragedy, the sadness of President Reagan's post-presidency, the development of Alzheimer's and living 10 years with it until his passing. What has retirement been like for you? Repeat that again, Larry. What has retirement been like for you? What has being a former president like? It's been a wonderful experience. Betty and I spent 28 years in Washington, 25 years in Congress, nine months as vice president, two and a half years as president. That was an exciting challenge and a wonderful experience. Uh, I was proud of the opportunity to be in Washington in those roles, and I thank the voters uh, for giving me that opportunity. Thank God uh, for this country where we have the kind of uh, opportunity for people to serve. I'm blessed and I'm grateful. And how about after the presidency? What's retirement been like? Well, we have enjoyed uh, retirement. I've cut back on the speeches I make around the country. Betty and I spend more time together. Uh, and uh, she was a wonderful wife while I was in the White House. Uh, we've had a wonderful relationship mm. We've been married 55 years, so I guess uh, we uh, can say things have gone pretty well. And before we meet Betty, how is your health? I'm fine. I had that setback in Philadelphia three or four years ago, but um, uh, I, I don't play 18 holes of golf anymore. I'm what they call a six-holer, but <laughs> I enjoy it, and uh, I have a bunch of pals in California that uh, are tough to compete with, but it's a wonderful retirement. Betty and I are very grateful. How old are you now, Mr. President? Well, I'll be 91 in about six weeks, so um, uh, it's moving up. <laughs> Will you attend the convention in New York? No, I don't think so. I've, I've, Larry, I've been to 14 Republican <laughs> conventions. So I think I've done my share. <laughs> I'll watch it on television and applaud our nominee and the whole program. When we come back, we'll be joined by Betty Ford. The president will remain as well. More of Larry King Live right after this. Tonight we come to this convention as simple volunteers. Betty and I are for Ronald Reagan and George Bush, and we are going to campaign for our Republican ticket from now until November 6th. On the next CNN Today, football fills the corporate coffers. Companies shell out millions to sponsor Euro 2004 in Portugal. How much will they make back and how secure are those exclusive deals? That's only on CNN Today. I'm shocked that it happened in Iraq, but I think these things have been happening inside America. As in other countries, we love the Americans, the, the American public, American nation, a very progressive nation. But politicians everywhere, like in other countries, they are not up to the mark. 
and they're all the time preaching something and doing something else. It's terrible. It's horrible seeing this kind of, you know, abuse of this uh, not considered, I mean, especially among American soldiers whom ev every people of the world trust. It's just a vindication of what we knew all the time. America is manipulating the whole world. And I mean, they, I mean, they are hiding things which are not good and protecting themselves with something which is very great. Views don't necessarily reflect those of CNN, but are opinions expressed by those who choose to participate in this open forum. edition of Design 360 from Berlin. Political turmoil and its influence on design. From no man's land to a new city center, how Berlin's past influenced the architects of Potsdamer Platz. And fashion in Russia, communism's impact on Moscow's designers. How fashion has changed since the Soviet era. That's Design 360 Sunday on CNN. In association with Alfa Romeo. Whether or not you know your can cleat from your clan cleat, Mainsail will have something for you. Mainsail launches June 20th, only on CNN. We meant to change a nation, and instead, we changed a world. The march of freedom and democracy, which will leave Marxism, Leninism on the ash heap of history. Forty summers have passed since the battle that you fought here. You were young the day you took these cliffs. To ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire, to simply call the arms race a giant misunderstanding. I believe that together, we can keep this rendezvous with destiny. President Gerald Ford remains with us and joining us now from their home in Beaver Creek, Colorado is our dear friend Betty Ford, looking as great as ever. Betty, what were your thoughts on the passing of Ronald Reagan? Well, my thoughts were really double. Deep, deep sorrow for Nancy and the family. But has since President Reagan had been suffering from Alzheimer's for 10 years now. I hope that it would be relief for the family because he really was failing so terribly. What was to you special, Betty, about their love story? Because you have a similar one. I would love to think that our love story was just as great as theirs, certainly theirs was one of the greatest love stories of all time, Larry. And uh, we all were pulling for them all the time. Uh, we have been fortunate to have 55 going on 56 years together. And uh, we feel that our relationship has only gotten stronger and stronger as we kind of face those golden years together. There was, as we discussed with the president, an assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan. You had to live through two. What was that like for the first lady? Oh, it was very scary, Larry. And after the first attempt on his life by Squeaky Fromm, every time he left the White House, I used to go on the balcony and pray that somehow he would come back and avoid anything like that again. But of course there was another one which made me even more apprehensive. We know President Reagan attended the dedication of the Ford Museum in Grand Rapids in September of 1981. I was honored to be there, that beautiful museum. And the both of you attended the dedication of the Reagan Library in November of 91. That was some dedication as well. How's everything going at your library, Betty? 
Oh, I think they're just doing astounding things because the display uh, changes so often that it's ever more interesting with the different displays that are shipped around from different libraries. I think you ought to point out, Betty, that you're so heavily involved with the Betty Ford Center that uh, you do a wonderful job as the hands-on chairman mm -hmm. of that uh, outstanding facility. I think Larry knows that. <laughs> He's been very supportive of us. I don't want to be morbid, but people, I know presidents do this. Nancy Reagan at the library showed me where she and the president will be buried. He'll be buried there on Friday night. And when Nancy goes, we hope many, 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 many years from now, she'll be buried next to him. Have you made such plans, President Ford? We have a, an area adjacent to the Ford Museum in Grand Rapids where both Betty and I will be uh, laid side by side. It's a beautiful location on the Grand River in Grand Rapids. And that's a very reassuring thought, Larry. It is? It's reassuring to you? Yes, it is. That eventually, you know, if anything happens, we will be there together, as we do have you, been for so many years. Betty, do you worry about President Ford's health? Well, I've worried about his health for a lot of years. <laughs> um, you know, of course, naturally, as we get a little older, I think we become closer together because he's not traveling as much and I certainly am not. So <clears throat> it's a different kind of um, marriage. Um, hmm. It's a very, very strong marriage, which of course is great for us and it's great for our children because they join us very often. President Reagan was 93. President Ford, what is it like to be 90? Well, I'm darn glad that I'm on my feet. Uh, <laughs> I will be 91 in July, and um, I applaud President Reagan for his many, many years of great leadership, and it was a great tragedy that he had uh, Alzheimer's for the last 10 years. I'm lucky so far that um, uh, I'm doing well, and Betty and I have a I'm just glad he's doing well, believe <laughs> me. It's, it's something that I thank the good Lord for every day. We'll take a break and come back with our remaining moments with the 38th President of the United States and his wife, Gerald and Betty Ford, on this special edition of Larry King Live. Don't go away. Today on CNN. With today's vote, we acknowledge an important milestone. The UN Security Council unanimously passes a resolution on Iran. In Baghdad, thousands of Shiites demonstrate in support of Grand Ayatollah Ali al Sistani's position against the interim Iraqi constitution. And in the U.S., the G8 summit begins. Iraq and the Middle East are high on the agenda. For the latest on these stories and more, watch CNN Today. This Iraqi position has just been overrun, shadow of Saddam Hussein's forces, for 12 years. Most people shut their shops here. Thanks, Zane. We're hearing nothing as yet in terms of the specifics of any casualties or damage. All right, that's it for now. So the Kabbalah this is, this run will city. take us about how long? A couple of hours? It will take us about an hour and a half. Okay, let's go. Uh, we're on a dangerous road south where there have been reported attacks in the past, and we now have a vehicle that's tailing us. So we're now on high alert. In, in the seventh century, <laughs> Saddam Hussein governed them. Almost impossible to get it on camera in these conditions. Let's go. Okay, they're doing Haiti first, and then Baghdad, and then over to us here in Kabbalah. Tired of a messy life on the road? 
on the next CNN Business Traveller from Zurich, getting organised. The skills you need to organise that successful business trip. Those lifestyle managers and whether or not they really lighten your load. And what makes Patek Philippe tick? We talk to the company's president. That's CNN Business Traveller, Sunday on CNN. This month on Living Golf, we're flying over Ireland. We delve into the Emerald Isles, treasure chest of courses, and why players are sparing no expense to see them all. Plus, the Indian talent left in the clubhouse, how their ambitions to tour the world aren't being met by sponsors. Well, a good one, sure. That's Living Golf with me, Don Riddell, Monday on CNN. Living Golf, in time with Rolex. Before I go, I would like to ask the person who has made my life's journey so meaningful, someone I have been so very proud of over the years, to join me. Nancy. We're back with our remaining moments with President Gerald Ford and Betty Ford from their home in Beaver Creek, Colorado. Everyone knows what Nancy Reagan has had to put up with these last 10 years, how tough that must have been. And what are your thoughts, Betty, about her? Oh, I have such great admiration for Nancy uh, as she has gone through this period. Uh, she's been strong, she's been dedicated, and she's been by her husband's side all of the time that she was, he has been so ill. And that's true dedication of their love affair. A couple of weeks ago, she came out strongly for stem cell research. Do you think that might prompt this to get along faster, Betty? Oh, her support is a very positive, major support for stem cell. Yes, we had already, she had written to us once, and we had written to her saying we were behind it 100%. And I know she has a, a large group of people that are going to support her in that. All right, President Ford, what will be President Reagan's legacy? What will the historians say? As a historian who thumbed through the pages of the Reagan presidency, they will find a president who was strong at home and effective abroad. We are proud of his record, and we uh, extend our deepest condolences and extend our prayers to Nancy, who's been a wonderful, wonderful wife. President Ford, would you call President Reagan a great president? Mm. Definitely, very definitely. He's first class, strong, and I think uh, He's, he gave to this country the kind of leadership we needed at home, but also the kind of leadership in beating the challenge of communism worldwide. He's first, he had a first class record. I'm proud to have uh, known him and worked with him. Betty, how did you get along with President Reagan? Well, he was a charming man as far as I was concerned. And, uh, of course, politically, I was always supportive of what he was doing. Um, he had a very warm personality and uh, always was very entertaining. And very supportive of your center, was he not? Oh, yes, indeed. And, you know, Larry, you were there for our 20th anniversary, and I was so grateful that Nancy could be there at that time. She made a big effort to um, be there with the other first ladies who came. Yeah. That was a great night. President Ford, when will you leave for Washington? We're leaving uh, Thursday. We'll be there overnight and we'll go to the uh, ceremonies in the uh, Capitol and we'll go to the uh, services at the cathedral. We uh, We'll be extending our 
warmest best wishes to a great president and his wonderful wife, Nancy. Is it nice to get along, Betty, when you see, uh, you'll see Barbara Bush and you'll see Hillary Clinton? Oh, I, you'll I, see I, Rosalind I Carter? I look forward um, to seeing. You know, the, the First Ladies have a unique admiration uh, kind of society because we've all been through that same experience together with the same responsibilities and you develop a friendship that is like no other friendship. What do you think of Laura Bush, by the way? Oh, I think she's tremendous. Uh, one of the very finest that we have had in many years. Um, she couldn't be, she really couldn't do a better job, Larry, I don't think. Thank you both for sharing this time with us, President Ford. And Mrs. Ford, it's always great seeing you. We wish you continued the best of health, and thank you for sharing your memories of President Reagan. Thank you, Larry, and the very best to you. Yes, thank you, thank Betty. you, Larry. Gerald and Betty Ford, the 38th President of the United States and the First Lady, former First Lady of the United States. And I'll be back in a minute and tell you about tomorrow night. Don't go away. Open your mind to the real Middle East. Vibrant. I love it. Modern. Mysterious. Discover its cultures. Rediscover its people. Inside the Middle East, every month, in association with Araskin Telecom, only on CNN. This is CNN. There is a place where words and pictures from around the globe come together to form a unique picture of our world. A place of unforgettable images and engaging stories. That place is CNN Traveler Magazine. With stunning photographic news reviews, inspiring features, and exclusive contributions from CNN's unrivaled journalists. Subscribe to CNN Traveler, the magazine for people going places, at cnntraveler.com. Every week, go inside Africa with CNN for a look at stories you won't see anywhere else. Arts and culture. Business news. Politics. All of Africa, now. For stories as diverse as the continent, Tumi Mahabu takes you inside Africa, Saturdays, only on CNN. live and exclusive the first interview together since the death of president reagan with uh, president ford and betty ford tomorrow night we'll be in houston texas and our special guests will be former president george herbert walker bush and barbara bush the bushes tomorrow night on larry king live Newsnight with aaron brown is next <laughs>